I wore shorts out to the beach yesterday and I felt like a freak. Oh, yeah. It's wild, but you have to wear shorts to the beach. It looks insane when you don't. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I just ha- I don't believe a man should have his shins out in public. I've said that many times and I'll say it again. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I just I'm too I'm sick and tired of going to the beach and being like, dude, I'm overdressed for this place. <laughs> I'm tired of showing up and being like, "You're who, 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 let go a little bit. Right. But I'll, I'll wear a long beach towel wrapped around me like a tunic. Oh, that is embarrassing. That I would never do. I would never let anybody see me drawing. Well, I just don't want to be like out there like a child. I got a policy, buddy. When you see me in public, I'm either going to be wet or drying. Right. I already walk like a child. Like I go left. Like my feet go out at 45 degree angles like I'm wearing clown shoes. Yeah. So when you see me in shorts and like Nikes and walking like that, it's like I look like a dude who should have somebody helping him. <laughs> Were you? I love when Brian. When Brian try Spenny G, Spenny G. That was Brian trying to be polite. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying really hard. That was, was Brian trying his goddamn hardest to catch up with these kids these days, man. I'm, try- I'm infinitely proud of you. I'm, I'm trying my ass off here. I um I can't I can't seem to get a comfortable distance from you. <laughs> it's pretty painful, it's, but it looks good in the camera. It must look. I hope there's this enough looks, distance here. It actually it looks good. If you're watching the show <laughs> tonight, welcome and thank you for watching the show tonight, tomorrow, yeah, whenever. If you're watching the show, whenever mm-hmm. you're watching the show, thank you because you are, for you are the only one who is not making this all in vain. If That's you're listening true. to the show, yeah. I've gotten uncomfortably close. <laughs> I would never be this close to, to Brian Voki if it wasn't for my fans, our fans. It's a it's uncomfortable. H O U R fans. Our fans. Nice, dude. <laughs> Very cool. It's a little bit uncomfortable. I don't like it. But I'm we're going to get through my it. My hand might touch your hand. Yeah. So let's just let's just <laughs> make a little promise tonight, Brian. Let's try not to gesticulate too much. I'm gonna wear. I'm gonna go Michael Jackson and just wear one glove on this hand in case I touch you. Just a nice sparkly glove. All profits that we make next uh, quarter, they're going to building a wall between you and me. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna try to separate us as much as possible. Yeah, and we'll just have an Orthodox man praying at the wall. Yeah, is that what happens at the at the, the wailing wall? Oh, are there? Are there two people on the other side? Is it like a wall? Rival prayers. Rival prayers. <laughs> like rap battles. <laughs> try, to sh- try to shout over the other one. Yeah. It's like rap battles in Jerusalem. They circle around. It's like, our father, Farouk Atal. Yeah. <laughs> Screaming at each other. Guy doing the rocking thing. The rocking thing. <laughs> yeah, they go yeah. back and forth. And then, you know. Mm-hmm. Our prayers. That's that. I like the rocking prayer versus the prayer that I grew up with. <laughs> the rocking prayer sounds like a, like I, when I was in Georgia as a kid. <laughs> yeah. There was rock and roll churches. Of course. Yeah. Where they would play like hair metal about god yeah of course yeah uh, that's something i will get into in one second here because i am fascinated about that <laughs> aspect of your culture because we my don't... culture no 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 no. i'm a catholic you're a ca- you're right you're a catholic you're got a little we class don't, we don't, you don't do fun. any of that kind we of just, stuff we have the same mass every sunday for a thousand years when i think about prayers which one seems the one that i could get behind the most the when i when you do the islamic prayers you're getting up you're getting down you're st- you're you're sitting up you're sitting down it's mm-hmm. a lot of movement yep I kind of liked how low key, kind of chill the the one where you're going back and forth is. Yeah, that one's nice, especially if you have like you know certain conditions. That yes. are conducive to rocking. <laughs> Seems like a friendlier kind of. I've dodged that word twice. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm really proud of you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, the rocking churches. I remember it was whenever I had a sleepover with my friends on like a Saturday night. And they were like, Brian can sleep over, but he's got to come to church with us. Mm-hmm. So I went to quite a few crazy churches. One was so big that we were in a separate room where they were projecting what was going on in the room over. Yeah. It was like it was like 10,000 people. Dang, dude. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. I That's how we're going to do our live pods. When As soon as this shit opens up. A sleepover? <laughs> no, 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 no. Dude, that sounds awesome. I was never <laughs> allowed to do sleepovers growing up. I could never sleep over at anybody's house. Why? I don't know. They never gave you a reason. They never gave There's us a no reason. There's no way that was a religious. I thing. think they were they were scared of assimilation. I do. Uh, really? Yeah. I think I don't think they I think they didn't want me coming back speaking English or wanting like playing you know, bass, playing bass, or <laughs> listening to the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. They were worried about things. I don't know why. I never slept over anywhere. I never invited anybody to sleep over at my place. I don't know what the policy was. I don't like to host. I, there's no way I'm hosting. I gotta have to. I gotta explain way too much to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I feel. For this place to make sense, <laughs> you're coming over. You're gonna sleep over. You're gonna find out what tabula is. Right. 
you're gonna see. You're gonna. I got. I got to explain to you what Mecca is at some point. This is an honest question. I'm not being a dick. Yeah. Did you eat at a table? <laughs> There's no way to ask that question without sounding like an insensitive. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, we ate at a table, Brian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you think we ate? <laughs> On the floor? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. I mean, I guess it could. I've seen videos in of people like, you know when I, like a hot white girl does like a, a tourist YouTube sure. channel where she's like, I go everywhere you can't go. And when they go to like Iraq and stuff, they're eating in on the floor. Multiple cultures eat off the floor and it's a better it's a better way to eat. Truthfully, I eat on the floor. Yeah, I'm just chilling. You ever have a meal on the floor? Everyone's chilling. If I had a meal on the floor, your feet are wherever you want your feet to be. You ever had a meal in a dumpster? Oh yeah, I've never done that. Delicious. You're just such kind of garbage that I can't. That's what I can't figure out. Is I was raised mm -hmm. in ninth century AD, basically, <laughs> and I look at you and I go, "What is wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong? <laughs> Who did this to you?" So my niece is in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Audrey. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's fine. I, I asked my it. sister, and she said it's fine. Yeah, I, I would prefer to bleep it. <laughs> I love you. Love bleeping names. I don't, you know, Spenny, you know what I'm saying, dude? This guy wants to say people's names on the air. It's like, bro. Well, you know, in stand-up, it works better when you have a name. It does, yeah. But that's that's why stand-up is horseshit. There's a lot of liabilities out there. <laughs> For sure. So my niece is in seventh grade, and listen to this project she was assigned. She was assigned... To research the Israeli-Palestine. She's how old, you said? Seventh grade. How old is that? Like 13, 11? How old was I when I was Why in seventh grade? Why would you do grade? that to me? I don't know. I was like 12. 9-11 just happened. So, mm -hmm. you know, things were things were really going on for me back then. Yep. She had, yeah. Things you were, were picking up. Yeah, you got some juice. <laughs> yeah. Your name was getting kicked around. I was starting to really, <laughs> uh, look, I moved to town in you 2000, and, uh, just 2000. <laughs> And around 2001, things started to really heat up for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you couldn't get through an airport unbothered. That's yeah. for sure. Well, I, you just, know, just like a celeb. I've never. I I don't know. Do, do you ever travel before 9/11? I'd never traveled before 9/11. If I think of, I, I feel like we drove everywhere we went. You never flew or anything. I don't know about this luxury life that people people. I'm sure I was on a plane before 9/11. People I'm older than you. People who were before before me love to be like, dude, you used to be able to just show up two minutes before the flight take off. <laughs> You could have a gun. Nobody cared. Right. It was every movie was stop that plane. Yeah. You know, running. Planes would definitely stop for your girlfriend. Yeah, you yeah, for tell sure. Her that you loved her. You just wave <laughs> through the window. Hey! And the pilot's like, oh shit, we gotta. Okay. There's a guy out there who wants to say he loves his girlfriend. And then he's really <laughs> sorry. And he'll never do it again. <laughs> no fucking problem whatsoever. We could just blast right through that. Now, if you need to save your marriage, you gotta show up four hours early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go through security, <laughs> yeah. try to prove you have a, buy ticket. a ticket. You have to buy a ticket. You have to, to buy flight. a ticket. How much do you love her? That's the question. <laughs> For I, it, and then it makes everything weird. You show up to the airport, you don't have a suitcase, you because you're not planning on traveling. No, no, no. But now it looks weird. Now so you're now getting you're getting pulled aside. Yeah. Aside, They're lifting your sack. They're doing that back, back of the hand oh, touch. Oh God. That's the part I object to the most. If they just touched me, fine. But the fact that I have to feel the intimacy of the back of their hand, no thank you. And they have to tell you right before they do it. Yeah. I'm going to, just so you know, I'm going to take the back of my hand and I'm going to. Yeah. And it's like, why are you, just don't tell me, just do it. Yeah. Just surprise me. It's like when you're getting a shot. Just so you don't, know. Okay. Yeah. Just so you know, <laughs> if you feel something on your backside right now, uh, that's not a python wrapping itself around <laughs> you. It's my hand. Just yeah. so you know. I do enjoy how. The TSA agent is always ten times more homophobic than I am, <laughs> so, so it's like it's not the. It's, I don't like. I just don't like being touched, but I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm going to hell. Or I something. like the idea of the homophobic TSA agent <laughs> who's telling you for himself. Yeah. <laughs> just going, so you know. Just so I know. I'm only using the back of my hand, and it's totally fine. Just because you touch somebody with the back of your hand doesn't mean you have to fall in love with who they are or, or anything like that. So that's just for me for me to know. Yeah, <laughs> just making a long, long, long caveat. But yeah, he, uh, the, the, my, my niece is in seventh grade and she had a school project where she had to research the Israeli Palestine debate, take a side, yeah. and defend it. You know, why so late is what I want to know as a Palestinian. <laughs> you guys don't start doing that right. You, you motherfuckers should start with that shit in kindergarten, dude. <laughs> motherfuckers out here in seventh grade learning about us. I don't know why. I I'm yeah, what are, what's turning? What are, what's going on? Palestinian Def Jam. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it would be great if I, just as I am today, was the Def Jam comedy star of Palestine. It's just you talking about Palestine but saying motherfucker. These motherfuckers out here, they're out here talking. <laughs> These motherfuckers out here not talking about Palestine, talking about junior high shit. We're talking about that shit in preschool, dude. <laughs> Hit it. See, <laughs> <laughs> talk. <laughs> Our Def Jam. They bought this, they've got the sitar and then the one that's too short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> too long and too short. Good. Just a cool white dudes. You guys figured it out, dude. Guitar. You guys yeah, were yeah, like, yeah. we are going to nail the neck length perfectly right here. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be too long. It's not going to be like, you don't need a second guy to yeah. hit the low notes. And it's not going to be so short that it's comical that you're holding Well, it. white people did do the mandolin. Okay. Yeah, but I'm saying eventually you Eve got yeah, it right. Yeah, yeah, eventually yeah. you would not settle till the neck was the perfect length. Did we talk about on this podcast already? Did I point out that the um what is it called in the in in the Muslim timeline the the years that are like when they were developing math and all that stuff like the golden years or something? Um I don't know if we actually refer I th we I don't know if the we golden age. It was called the golden age. Okay. But do you know that simultaneously Europe was ca calls that same exact period of time the dark ages? Yeah. I wonder if there's a connection <laughs> there's a connection there. there that Europe was in the dark ages. It was just like they just went Whoop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What a, what an insane thing! I didn't know that th those um, two time periods uh, occurred concurrently. It's like the nine hundreds to the twelve hundreds. Yeah, those the dark ages, and then for you, the dark ages were the golden age. Dude, so good. <laughs> we were killing it around then, dude. Yeah, poetry, all the stuff Math. that everybody hates. Yeah, yeah, poems and algebra. Dude, could you imagine how annoying it was to meet an Arab in the ninth century, oh walking up to you, being like, "Oh, you guys read that new Rumi poem?" You're yeah. like, "Oh, dude, Ugh. I, I no, I did not read it." Okay, okay. have you solved for X yet? Yeah. <laughs> you okay. Got, <laughs> I got. I cannot wait to tell you about this thing called X. It's insane. <laughs> So can you imagine? But okay, so a little backstory about my niece is she. Uh, I, I'm sure you've got Z plus seven. Uh, you know how they have like a stupid Z? number. Yeah, you I'm think like, they say Z over there? Oh, they definitely say Z over there. Ugh. I any oh, because they were a British mandate. Any kind of culture says Z. I hate it, dude. Yeah, no, not a fan. Yeah. South Africa, Australia, the UK. It's just like ugh. I bet they say that in Canada. Z. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm sure they do. Yeah, they got they got them all over their money and shit over there. Ugh. Could you imagine having such weak money that you're like, ugh. The Queen of England is on this money? Yeah, or a uh, or a hockey player. How can I respect this money? I would say. Yeah, it's blue, it's green. It's, it's not green. Sorry, it's blue and it's pink. It's blue and pink. Pink. I'm just, whatever, man. It's just not But did babies? Is this money for babies? Well, I mean, look, man. Look, you know, you want know Brian? That's not the tone this podcast takes, dude. We're gonna try to be accepting of whatever is going on, and you know what? We'll just say we'll agree to disagree on what currency should look like. So uh, Palestine. Yeah. What did your Yeah. What did your niece? Uh, so she's she's just like me. She's an anxiety case. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what's funny is that she couldn't figure out what side to take, but she had. If you saw her points written down, it was all these points for Palestinians. They're not funded by Europe. They're not funded by the United States. They don't have the weaponry. They're not. Their their water is stolen from them. Uh -huh. Their houses are stolen from them. Uh, it's an, uh, you know the land was seized by the UN. All that she had Very all these points. Very mean Ramsey growing up. And then on this side she had, I really don't want to look anti-Semitic. <laughs> that was like her list. It was like, Brrr, and then over here it was like ding 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 yeah. ding. Like I really, I just don't want to say Palestine because I don't want to look like an anti-Semite. It's I'll be completely honest with you. I do actually I don't care for the school system. That's like you gotta pick. Like all right, I, I give know. these kids a minute here. Yeah, she had a panic attack. She went with Palestine. Can we teach? Can we teach them? I don't know anything else. This seems like. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Here I am, 31 years old, okay? 31 years old. I live in Southern California. Not once has my n intense knowledge of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict ever benefited me. <laughs> well, also, it's, it's an time. unsolvable problem. It doesn't make It would have been solved by now if it was solvable. I mean, you might as well be like, all right, build a desalination machine. Yeah. What am I going to do? Exactly. It's not going to work. Oh, you, oh, K Kissinger, Kissinger couldn't do it? You want me to take a crack at it? What do I fucking know? He's still alive. He's one of the people who refuses to die. And he's still like involved in the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations. What if we found out one of the ways that you can extend your life was by bombing Cambodians? <laughs> what hey, are you going to get a Henry Kissinger joke? <laughs> Will you look up how old Henry Kissinger is? He's three. He's OK. I'm going to tell you right now. He's 125. I'm going to guess he's. 
He was the secretary. 142. Secretary of State under Nixon. Is that yeah, correct? Yes. All right, here we go. He's Henry Alfred Kissinger. Look, that picture is in black and white. And he already looked old. He looks. <laughs> dude, it's crazy when you see people who are. Yeah, you're after his picture. 97. Is, he wasn't even born in Germany. He was born in the Weimar Republic. 19. That's pre-Germany. Dude. <laughs> and he's still alive? He's still out there, dude. Where does he live right now? He's does he live over uh, in in uh, does he live stateside? Or, no, uh, you know he lives here. Yeah, he's an American. I mean, he's a Secretary of State. Dude, it's wild. Some people are um, live. Some people are living to be old, and they're out there living lives. Like, wait, will you click on his wife? I also want to go down. We, <laughs> we could just real quick. I know we should find out if the Secretary of the State under uh, Richard Nixon during the seventies had a, had a hot wife. We should probably figure it out here. It's on the right down there under political party spouse Nancy McGinnis. Right there, married 1974. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you got it. Quicker. She was, dude, 1974. Dude, she's Whoa, a fox. She is Carilla Car DeVille. She is. And by that, I mean hot. Yeah, man. She looks like a, a fashion designer from the future. She's, she she's has 4,000 pearls around her neck. Yeah, absolutely. You know, wherever she went, animals died. Like she yeah, has, she, yes. Everything she's doing is in in some way, shape, or form funds the cruel death of an animal. You wanted to hear the most elite sentence ever. Nancy Kissinger later became director of inter international studies for Rockefeller's Commission on Critical Choices for Americans. Yeah, <laughs> that that's like elite. I think as a podcast, we need to make it an absolute goal to be appointed to a commission. We don't care which one it is. Well, yeah, I would love to be on a commission. Dude, commission of 69 in <laughs> <laughs> The American... <laughs> the commission on the no teeth blowjob? <laughs> <laughs> the American commission on bong rips while doing doggy style? Dude. Was... We should start a commission to investigate the different <laughs> sizes of a skateboard. We're like, come on, we got we got to make a choice. You're going around on a mini one. People in Long Beach are on these huge ones. The the cute trickster kids are on the medium ones. What are we doing here? You got it. That's a fair point. And I'll They're tell like you what. like saxophones. There's alto, baritone, and soprano. That's and people talk about like how as I mean, we're not a useful generation. That's not true at all. This could be a great use of our expertise mm -hmm. in this in this realm of things. If you're in our generation and you're on the tech side, great. We're going to figure out skateboard sizes. Yeah. We're going to you know? commission to finally get to the bottom of it. Finally get to the bottom of it. We're finally going to figure out which is better, do doggy style or missionary. <laughs> We're going to get to the bottom of it. You know I'm rooting for missionary. <laughs> I know you are, and I hate that. You're the only one. We're only starting this commission because of you. Missionary? Everybody else says doggy style. Guys. We got it. Wait. We got a third person in the room. We got a, we got a, a tiebreaker here. Spenny J. Missionary or doggy style? Doggy. Doggy for sure, he said. Dude, missionary with the one you love is so much is so much better than any <laughs> than anything you guys are talking about. We should change the podcast to Doggy for sure. <laughs> Man, you guys are wild, dude. <laughs> wild. <laughs> you know what? The only sexual position for me is one of the pilgrims. <laughs> you wear the buckle hat. Is that your fucking? <laughs> I look like I'm putting on a Thanksgiving play every time I have sex. You're in your honeymoon and the <laughs> airport loses your buckle hat. You're like, we can't consummate this marriage. I don't have my buckle hat. Dude, what in God's name <laughs> was the buckle doing on that hat? <laughs> We're, it's 100% sure, decorative. Surely hats weren't needing to be adjusted on your head this often. <laughs> it's windy today. Let me tighten the buckle up that's above my head. An absurd use of a buckle. I'm putting that into the one of the worst uses of a buckle that we've ever we've Dude, ever done. If that were me, my buckle would have got. I would have accidentally tightened it, and then it would have folded and oh, flopped over. No way would I look at. I would like Santa Claus, but like goth Santa Claus. At some point, I would have blown out my buckle. It would have been fucking scuffed <laughs> yeah. up. Might have been rusted side. and scratched. Yeah. Somebody would have. Oh, you know what? Somebody actually stole my buckle. <laughs> I had it parked in front of my house, the hat, yeah. and I just was leaving it there for a second, yeah, as yeah, you do, yeah. and came back up. Who's that? Who's <laughs> just the outline of a buckle was on my hat. Yeah, you John Smith stole it. Yeah, yeah. It melted. You're it like, down. I would have been fucking Sacagawea or whoever. No, who is he fucking? Pocahontas. Pocahontas. I, I would have been fucking Pocahontas if I had that buckle back. Yeah, he melted it, sold it down. <laughs> Made a grill. Made a grill out of it. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> I lost my woman to <clears throat> Paul Wall. Yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. Man, 
You know, I was watching um, the... Uh, so wait, did she ultimately end up having to make a decision, by yeah, the way? Yeah, she chose Palestine. She chose Palestine? Yeah, yeah. Well... Because the a- only pro-Israel argument she could come up with in her own head yeah. was uh, people are going to think I'm anti You show me a little kid who's pro-Palestine, and I'm going to show you a little kid who's going to grow up to be a loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say. They say when you're a child, you're yeah. supposed to be pro-Palestine, and yeah, as you get older, older you you're pro-Israel. Israel. That's kind of how I feel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm getting into my 30s, I'm like, well, listen to Netanyahu. Let me hear what he has yeah, to say. Yeah. I kind of like, you know, I like that he looks me in the eye when he talks to me. That's why Ted Cruz is so psychotic, because he was pro-Israel as a child. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but again, you start off, you show me a child who's pro-Israel. I can say a lot of things, but I'll tell you what I'll say about that child. At the end of it all, he'll be a winner. I promise yeah. you. <laughs> I'll show you a child who's going to be disappointed that she's not allowed to grow dreadlocks. Yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> They'll find their way, though. I like when you meet the the random hippie Israeli. Oh, they're all over the place. Yeah, that's, that's a, a huge thing. That's a wild one. Whenever you see those people, you're yeah. like crazy, man. How how are you guys so close to? <laughs> I know you. And they got the dreads and all this stuff. And you're like, why would you squander your natural beauty? Yeah. You know. I mean, I guess I saw white dreads today, and it was like a throat. I was like, am I, am I at a three eleven? <laughs> like, I haven't seen white dreads in forever. Where did you see white dreads? Online for the coffee. Online for the coffee? Yeah, yeah. What, what is that? <laughs> I was uh, in the line. Oh, I was like, online for Sorry. the coffee? What is this? E- this is an app or something? Some ac- accidental East Coast lingo came yeah. out of me. I was in line for you. Know, online for the East Coast. On, on the line? You're in the line. <laughs> you're in the line. You're, you're not in the line. You're on the line. The line's below you. You're next in the line. The internet, was, the internet yeah. fucked that language up. Yeah, but yeah, this guy was in line and he had blonde dreads, and I I just hadn't seen that. He I mean, was Europe, a guy. They do that in Europe. Yeah, yeah he yeah. was a boy. All right. Yeah, girls can do whatever they want. Girls can do whatever they want. Get out dreads. That's that. That's part of the commission that we're currently working on right now. <laughs> the, the commission. Chicks, the the commission of chicks can do whatever they the want. Chicks hair. Hot chicks can do whatever <laughs> they want. Commission on chicks hair. Yeah, the commission on <laughs> hot chicks with cool hair. <laughs> we lead it. We lead the way. You know what I'm getting sick of seeing? I was watching, um, you know, watch a lot of news. It's part of what I do around here. It's one of the most uh, trusted news sources in AM podcasting. For sure. Which is what we do, AM podcasting. Um, Amplitude modulation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never. You know what? I never learned what AM or FM stood for. Frequency modulation and amplitude modulation. That was, for me, um, again, I said this a little bit earlier. But I mean this. I'm sort of a big picture guy. I was always like, I don't care what AM or FM stands for. Just get me on the airwaves. <laughs> yeah. I got to get on the airwaves. You're Howard. I'm Robin. I got a message to tell these people. And what is it? Uh, okay. Well, here's. <laughs> That's tough, dude. You can't. You can't. You got to be. Re- I never realized that you had to be ready to tell people the message when you told them you had a message. <laughs> How long have we been in this uh, in this pandemic? Would you say six, seven months? Seven months. I'm getting pretty fucking tired of uh, um, watching. Uh, like, I watch a lot of news shows in preparation for this show. We mm-hmm. do two episodes a week. I try to we try to talk about different topics. We try to cover all different facets of the world. It's what we do at the worst hour of the week. And, uh, you know, people who are doing news shows and they have no Zoom situation figured out whatsoever. I know. I know. You're on your tenth. At this point, we're entering our seventh month. We understand that this virus is here to stay. Mm-hmm. Get a fucking ring light and a microphone. What are you doing? Dude, Noam Chomsky's, Chomsky's been doing Democracy Now! And he looks like Wilson from Home Improvement. Like, his Has screen he... is always just like, you just see these, the most old eyes you've ever seen in your life in this tuft of ancient hair. Bro, it is, it's like, get your shit together. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, man. Like, you're here. I get it. First week of the pandemic, I wouldn't have built the podcast studio immediately. But it's like. Seven months in, listen, if you're going to be talking to Stone Phillips, who's, I don't know who's, who's doing it these days. I saw a guy, I saw this guy that fucking pissed me off this morning who was, um, God damn it, Spenny. I wish I would have sent you the clip. He was doing this, uh, interview. He was talking about Trump. He was like a doctor and he was in front of a bookcase. Um, and on the, behind him in the bookcase, there was like, uh, like a real arrangement of like Star Wars characters and like <laughs> Chewbacca. And he had like a quote behind him that was like, you know, he's talking man. about Trump's mitochondrian levels. And he's out there. He's out there being like, listen, what the president is doing by hopping in that car and pa- is actually a major violation of the CDC. I'm like, I could give a shit what you have to say right now. What was, I don't understand why people were so mad. He drove around in a car, dude. I, that was, I thought that was cool. People don't understand. <laughs> To you, yes, Trump is not a great leader. He's a great business guy. He goes, 
He goes, that's who's that's my fucking fan base right there. I got to get out there and show them I'm the man. Well, so that's how he heals. He sucks life out of other people. He rolled out there. He was like, I don't care how many people I could kill right now. <laughs> but why, why was he endangering people? Wasn't he in a closed car? They say that there was plexi glass between the two of them. So for those of you who don't know what Brian is talking about, maybe you don't. And we'll talk about this a little bit more on the show. Brian is referencing, of course, Donald Trump circling. Uh, he was circling outside, Walter Reed Hospital. outside of Walter Reed Hospital. His former bed stay. He's no longer. Also my former bed stay. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on. We'll get into that in a second. Circling around it. Uh, he gets in the car. People were just waving flags out of support mm -hmm. for the president. Um, and he just w drove around. Did you see this, Benny? He was driving around in circles, waving at the people, saying hello. Yeah, I, I just couldn't understand why people were so upset about that. I saw that, and I was like, this guy really is the people's champ. He really, like, he knows he knows what, what people want him to do. He'll go do it. He knows how to appreciate his base. His base appreciates him. Mm -hmm. These people, This guy, fucking, he's got it, unfortunately. He's a good business guy. I mean, he wouldn't be where he is if he didn't have it. No, ma he, meaning Corona. <laughs> he does have Corona, although I think he's been cured. But we'll talk about that in a second. Been uh, cured. <laughs> I think he's been cured. I believe he actually no now is the Corona cure. Uh, just like I predicted. Predicted on the Patreon episode it's of the West like, of the turns Week. Turns out, pussy cures it. This <laughs> 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 is on live. <laughs> <laughs> pussy, it was pussy. I swear to God. I'll, I'll, I mean, that or ramen. Yeah, it turns out it was either <laughs> it's one or the other. It was ramen, or it was the fact that this hot nurse <laughs> gave me a sponge bath. Yeah, dude. Now that is that. Now, now we're talking. Tr that's for sure what was going on. The only, Trump was at Walter Reed. The only two things I ate was ramen and pussy. So, so maybe it's a what, the what do they call that? A cocktail of hey, <laughs> experimental goes, medicine. Then he looks at somebody else in the crowd and he goes, "I don't know, but I guess I'd be willing to sign up for that experiment, right?" <laughs> Anyways, good to be back as your president, folks. Yeah, ladies and germs. <laughs> Anyways, glad to be back here, motherfuckers. Yeah. He's like, twat, can't hear you. <laughs> By the way, back with us um, from a second week producing Spenny G on the ones and twos. Mm -hmm. Not not quite producer yet. He has advanced around in America's Next Top podcast producer. Yeah, it's a big, you know, it's a long season. Yeah, I mean, listen, you've got, you've got, we'll be honest with you, Spenny, you've got big shoes to fill. I mean, when Tyler remembered to bring his shoes, <laughs> <laughs> that guy, that guy did a lot of work. You got a lot, got a lot to catch up to, man. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot my car. How did you get here? <laughs> I guess I walked. <laughs> we should have Spenny. Um, I, I'm trying to think. We should give Spenny um, challenges to, <laughs> that he's got to do every week as the as as he's auditioning to be right. The, right. He's got to pull up a clip on a treadmill. Yeah. So just <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we, All right. We need you to find Joe Rogan episode 1100 where yeah. he's talking to Jordan Peterson about pronouns. Yeah. No. Exactly, and he's got to do it. And, and we're the like, treadmill's on eleven. We're spraying him in the face. We're like tear gassing him. We're just we're getting we're like fucking with all of his senses. Yeah, I like this idea. Oh yeah, because we're gonna eventually do a live cast from a riot. So yeah. we'll CS him. <laughs> yeah, we'll just put some CS gas in him and just so, yeah. We'll make him the last one. He's got to produce at a riot while dressed as a police officer. You need to you need to pull up a clip of Henry Kissinger's wife while spray painting "Locker Up" on a wall with the other hand. Yeah, and if you can do both of those at the same time, you have what it takes to be America's next ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum podcast producer. <laughs> And then you get to make out with Tyra Banks. Yeah. So, anyways, you could, if you want, hey, if you have an idea for maybe a, a challenge you'd like, um, you know, Spenny G to do, you could write into the show, worst out of the week at gmail.com. Our inbox is always open for you people. Send us your stories, send us pictures of your tits. We take pictures of tits. Do we still do that? We still take, we'll take dick pics too. We'll take dick pics we'll, too. We'll just send them straight to Spenny. Straight to Spenny. <laughs> 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 and you know, as the producer, he could filter through for the huge. You know, yeah. I only want the hugest hogs. Okay, let's, I don't let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. If you're listening and you want to send us a pic a picture of your tits, you can do that to Brian and Ramsey <laughs> at worst hour of the week at gmail dot com. <laughs> If you want to send your hog, it's SpennyG at WorstHour.com. SpennyG at WorstHour.com. And if you have a hog that gets through him to us, like if it's a real. If it's really. Yeah, a, if it it's a hammer. If it gets through Spenny. Yeah, yeah. If it gets to the point where Spenny's like, listen, I got to talk to you. You have to see this one. 
<laughs> I have something phenomenal to show you. Yeah, yeah. I have something that's going to light up your day. It's going to give you something to do. Is oh, that your no. phone? Wow, dude. First time. This is the first time he, this has happened in weeks. I forgot. I got a little too comfortable and I crossed my legs. I forgot we were on camera. Yeah, that's pretty embarrassing. I don't want to podcast like I'm Burt Reynolds on Johnny Carson. <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> Yeah, why are you sitting like that? <laughs> I don't know. Like a young like a young tennis playing star. I got to tell you, when I first got the script for this picture, I was thinking, there's no way I could pull this off. You yeah. Know? Sitting like, you, like you're from an yeah. era where you can smoke indoors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Jane Fonda, you know. Do you think they'll ever get rid of smoking indoors? What do you mean? Like, when you go to casinos and stuff, you know how you can smoke indoors? No, they'll never get rid of a casino. They'll never get rid of it there. You don't even smell it in a casino. We don't have jurisdiction over casinos. No, no. That's that's Native American t land. It's a weird It's a weird message, right? <laughs> it's such a weird message. The to entire be like, idea of a casino is a weird message. We're so sorry about everything we did, so we're going to give you the privilege of running a criminal organization. Right. We're going to give you the privilege of running a business that takes advantages of all of the worst aspects of humanity. Yeah. Would you like 99% of your in income to come from social security checks? Uh, yeah. We got a business for you. Dude, if the Israelis get Palestinians casinos, that'd be, so <laughs> that'd be so sick. I'd roll through. I'd roll through, dude. Ramsey's. Ramsey's in the West Bank. It would be called Ramsey's. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. real Sahara. What's, what's, <laughs> what's that casino gas station in Las Vegas, in Nevada? All yeah, the first one that you angry, get into. It's like Angry Teddy or something. It's something, it's something ridiculous. It's something like that because you would have a thing and then Ramsey. Yeah. Like. I would be the first one in there, dude. I'd have my own, you know, crazy. It'd be a vape theme. It'd be, it'd be future. That would be the theme of my casino. It'd be like. Back you're, to the future. Yeah, type you're in thing. the future kind of thing. And so everyone's vaping. And you get in a DeLorean for the, the the slot machine is a DeLorean with doors that open up. Exactly. <laughs> and then you put your change in there. Yeah. Yeah. We have a Tesla sticker on stuff. Mm -hmm. It's future, <laughs> you know. But all the machines are running on gas. Yeah. Like the roulette it runs on a lawnmower engine. You have to rip it. You have to prime it before you get it going. <laughs> 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 and the roulette run. Like all the windows have to be open at yeah. every casino. There's really active the oil derricks in the casino. Yeah, Just we, doosh, doosh. we have to actually burn a barrel of oil uh, to <laughs> run anything here. So all the windows are open. So smoking is actually the least of your concerns. Yeah, you're next to a burning tire and you're like, can I smoke in here? Yeah, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a while before the electric car gets in the Middle East. That's what sucks about, about the electric car thing is that it'll get everywhere except for the Middle East. Pretty quickly. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's like banning smoking in North Carolina. That's why the worst hour of the week is actually going to be taking proceeds from our Patreon this month. And we're going to be donating them to um, electric cars for the Middle East. It's a nonprofit yep. charity organization I just founded. Mm -hmm. um, and the if there's one thing Yemen needs, it's Teslas. For right now? Yeah, couldn't <laughs> hurt. Yeah, it's like, fine, my you know parents were just killed in an airstrike, but pretty cool that the car parks itself. Yeah. So, do you know the carbon footprint of that airstrike? <laughs> I mean, you got to you got to balance it out somewhere. Yeah. Why not start with a Tesla? <laughs> I like how I'm not even starting with like a Nissan Leaf. I'm like, you should start with a three hundred thousand dollar one. In my mind, there, I didn't even know that there were electric cars that weren't Teslas. Yeah, man, that's the kind of market that we're out there running. <laughs> what What other electric cars are there? Ah, oh, dude, there's a, a Leaf is electric. Dude, yeah, man. Like you plug it in, and there's no there's no gas at all. Dude, you can get almost up to three miles without having to charge wow. a gallon. Of it's, an, it's an incredible feat. Before people had Teslas, people literally were like, this electric car is awesome. 13 miles round trip. I mean, as long as you're going under 13 miles and you have five hours to spare to charge the battery, it's amazing. That's fantastic. So. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a great show for you guys tonight. We're going to get into Donald Trump. Driving in a circle around Walter Reed. His COVID um, diagnosis, uh, uh, you know, his recovery. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of other amazing sto stories. Did you know that the Red Bull, that the uh, heir to the Red Bull throne is currently wanted for murder by the international police? People don't know about that. That's something that's happening. I haven't thought about Interpol in a while. Interpol is the, is the only cool police force, right? Do they have police stations? Interpol? I imagine that they just have like like the space station. You gotta fl you gotta fly <laughs> up to the space station to meet the international police. These guys are the international police. Right. Maybe they have like a place like uh, what's that? Keanu Reeves, Jack Spock. What's, what's that Keanu Reeves movie? There's like four of them. 
I've seen no movies. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Speed? No, the, the, the Speed 2? W- John Wink? John Wick. John Wick. Never seen John Wick. Okay, well, th- that's what I imagine. Is it anything like the movie Coco? It's a lot like Coco, but imagine <laughs> like cops and white people in live action. Okay. I like it. I love yeah, yeah, Coco. But it's very similar to Coco in the fact that they are both films. I had a movie. Do you have a movie pass? I never had movie pass. I had movie pass for six months. I swear to God, I saw Coco twice with it. That was no. all I did. Whenever I, I go to a, when I go to a movie, I just ask the usher. I say, "I'm just here to buy popcorn." I'm like, "Can I, can I just go buy popcorn?" And then and then they that I sneak into the movie theater. Yeah, I mean, it's not. A, <laughs> it's so confusing for the usher. Here. But also, when I say I'm here to buy popcorn, yeah, what I do is I go straight to a trash can and I pull out one of those free refill popcorn, uh-huh. and then I go get a free refill of popcorn out of the trash. And then I go sit in free movie, free popcorn. Seems seems like a how f- I met your mother. <laughs> it seems like a foolproof plan, man. <laughs> I can't imagine you've ever run into any issues. Then that's when we should have been like, as a society, we should have all pulled back right at movie pass. That was when shit started to get haywire. That was when we were starting to get too full of ourselves pre crash. <laughs> in what what way, dude? Having a, a nine ninety five to see unlimited <laughs> movies at the theater. What's, I don't get what the problem is. It sounds fantastic. Dude, it was unsustainable. At that moment- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they got a, rid of it. Yeah, they did. But at that moment, we should have been like, dude, we as a society are too full of ourselves right now. Do you think the movie theater industry started Corona? Could be. To curb down all this movie going? Makes the most sense. <laughs> I've ever heard. Makes the most sense that I've ever heard of. <laughs> They're like, look, these people- If anybody's winning in this whole fucking thing- It's, it's AMC. Them. It's AMC. <laughs> yeah. It's the other one, Pacific whatever. Regent. Regent. Yeah. I don't go to movies, dude, at all. I literally watch, I, I on repeat watch The Trial of Saddam Hussein in Arabic mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And that's all. Yeah, you always- And then Shark Tank. Do you always find something new when you watch it? Yeah. I always, I learn a new lesson about how to not represent yourself in court. Yeah, he he kind of went a little Manson. And you, yeah, and it's a little important to learn a little bit about war crimes too. I think every young Arab should should know a few things about war crimes. It's also it's good to have in mind what you would scream out at the gallows right before the floor drops out below you. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want to blow that line. You don't want to blow that line. He was rehearsing. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> he said that. I don't know if you know this or not, Spenny, but Saddam Hussein, prior to being, uh, <clears throat> prior to. Um, Hanged to being hanged. I, you know that that it's hanged. It's hanged. Prior to being hanged, they were gonna put a bag over. I'm his hung. Head. He was hanged. He's hung. <laughs> no, I'm hung. William he was hanged. Ha- Is it William hanged? It's it's, it's from it's, American. Yeah, Idol? yeah. It's William hanged. When after he's done. After he's done. Yeah, yeah. So, um, they while they were hanging, while they were about to hang, <laughs> Saddam Hussein. He was moments from being hung from. Hanged. He was always hung. He was a oh, who hung, hang. <laughs> no, he was a big cock dictator. He was a hung dictator who was hanged. I see. That's how you get this. So in the past, though, was he hunged or hanged? He was hanged. He was hanged. Death by hanged. Death by hanging. Yeah. Before he, before Saddam Hussein was hanged, hanged. he, they were gonna put a black bag over his head, and he he refused to do it. And he said it was because. He wanted to look everybody in the eye while they were killing him. Which, by the way, is impossible to look at everybody in the eye. You yeah. just got to pick one person. You pick one you person. Can't, you can't look everybody in the eye. I imagine. The, yeah. the, the, the ego on this guy. He thought he could. What is he, a fly? If I've ever heard a story about a guy who did have the ability to look 30, 30 <laughs> people in the eye, though, <laughs> you guys got to understand. I grew up in a culture. Yeah. We talked about Saddam Hussein growing up like you guys talked about Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of conversations of like this guy one time took on a whole village by himself. He mm-hmm. did it Bedouin style. He gave them a gun. <laughs> That's Bedouin style, dude. You give them a gun and you fucking you tell them that you're gonna come back here in about an, in about thirty minutes and you're gonna start shooting them. So to be prepared, here's your gun. Isn't that badass? Why wouldn't you shit? just shoot the Bedouins as they walk away, dude? It's an honorable thing to do. <laughs> That's what we're about is honor. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not a return policy, we're about honoring it. Okay, so what? Wait, after before he was hanged, he looked everybody in the eye, and he said, "If you want to hang me, you're gonna have to look me. Uh, I'd I'd like to look everybody in the eye." And they hung him. And then what? What did he say as the floor burst down below him? I don't remember. Did he say something as the floor burst down below him? He, I don't think he did. He 100 percent said something. I just don't remember what. It was in Arabic. So what the fuck do I know? Spenny, can you pull up the? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Actually, Spencer. 
I'm gonna have to ask you to not pull up the hanging of Saddam Hussein. <laughs> but yeah. could you Google uh, or start page? We don't use Google here. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> I use Brave. You use Brave. I use Start Page. You know, Brave. Saddam's actually, last words. Brave actually um, tells you the number of of uh, ads it's blocked, and then it tells you how much time you've saved. And ever since I started using um, Brave, I've actually saved a collective two minutes. Oh yeah, uh, AdBlock tells me how much time they saved me, but they they're like in seventy two hours we've saved you four thousand hours. And, and you're know, like, I, of course, it yeah. does it doesn't add up. Is there no uh, quote of his last words? Yeah, I don't think I don't think he said anything. I, I Muktada, Muktada, are you sure that's what he said? That sounds like Lion King. M U M U Q T A D A. Maybe he was saying ta da, ta da, or perhaps he was saying. <laughs> Yeah, or maybe that's the sound of a crushing esophagus. Could very well be that. It's either Arabic or a crushing... <laughs> Did I, wonder, I say sarcophagus? I wonder if at some point when you are being hanged... I wonder if at some point when you do get hung, if you... <laughs> Upon but being high, if you guys are confused on what we're doing right now, this podcast is also used as for TEFL instruction. It's uh, people use this podcast to learn English. Yeah. So we've got a shoehorn grammar into, into the podcast as part of our sponsorship. I would say if you're being hanged at any point, mm -hmm. at some point when you're up there, you because you got a couple minutes before you die. At some point, you're probably up there going, I'm, I am fucking being hung right now. This is fucking crazy. You have to be thinking that thought. I don't I, I, I don't think that's possible because I think the blood cut off to your brain consciousness. I don't know if it works that way, man. Maybe for one second, you must be thinking, uh, I can't. Holy shit. I can't feel it. They're doing it. I would be worrying about how I'm going to shit. I know I'm going to shit myself. Uh, I'm telling you, if you hang me, I'm, I'm eating nothing but fucking. I'm doing an enema. I'm not doing any <laughs> of the I'm not doing any of the lactose free ice cream. I'm going extra hard lactose. Mm. Kufta, whatever could just be, <laughs> whatever could get inside of me and just make it all haggis, horrible. and I'm I'm letting that all out when as soon as I as soon as I get hanged, and, and I'm having one blue chew. I'm going. I'm gonna die hard. Too. <laughs> Do you see that's, that's that's you know I wouldn't want to make a mess. I still even if they were hanging me, I wouldn't want to. I would still be worried about being embarrassed about shitting and pissing and coming myself. Well, you then you do want to do you do still want to do one like Cialis or something. I would do a Cialis just to get a little for sure. <laughs> well, I, there might be shrinkage when they hang you. I don't know. I want people to know what I was. Just just to be in the <laughs> just for that corner, that conversation <laughs> in the corner is going to be like. <laughs> You know, dude, it's, he's got a good piece on it. It's a goddamn shame this guy went down. Also, they could say, you know, you could make an argument that you went out, you know, on a masturbation accident. And that, who you making the argument to? <laughs> no, like other people could be like, dude, they didn't hang him. He was just getting off. Nah, this guy was, he yeah, had a boner. This guy was trying to <laughs> he was beaten off. <laughs> no, they that, didn't hang him. That's how they get him to stop. That's how they get him to stop, uh, to stop hanging because he, he keeps trying to start jerking off. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And they're like, dude. That's what I would do. Eric. I would just start beating up. They're like, Eric, we're serious, dude. You got to stop doing that because we can't hang you. <laughs> Whenever you do that, you turn it into a sex crime. <laughs> I like that Spen Spenny G is currently on a website called thejournal.ie. I like when we're in domains. Of <laughs> what is IE? <laughs> what is, what? is that an Icelandic website? <laughs> what? When you're in the domain dot IE, let's just go ahead and say it. You're not, I, I'm not, it's not a reliable source. Okay. <laughs> what, what have we learned about Saddam? So, uh, it took him to the judge's room where he read the list of indictments <laughs> as Saddam repeated. Death to America, <laughs> death to Israel, long live Palestine, <laughs> death yep. to Persian. Um, Magi. Magi. Okay. Or I, Magi. I, for a second, thought it said death to Persian rugs because it's <laughs> the same, it's the same length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Jesus, guy. <laughs> This guy really hated furniture. He takes his decor seriously. I mean, those were nice palaces. I hate to hear what he has to say about Afghans. So I he mean, said, death. D okay, let's read that one more time. He got in there. He said, death to America, death to Israel, long live Palestine, death to the Persian Magi. And then took Saddam into the room where he was a die. Saddam stopped. Look at the gallows. He, then he looked the doctor up and down and said, doctor, this is for men. Pointing at his. Uh, <laughs> and he was pointing at his. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then he went, D-Generation X. And then he did a suck it. Because yeah. that was big back then. Yeah. That was 2005. 2003? Yeah, 2005. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was totally into DX. The idea that there is a <laughs> chance that Saddam Hussein, <laughs> Osama bin Laden, maybe one time did watch <laughs> one episode of SmackDown. Yeah. <laughs> it had to happen once. Where at one point Osama bin Laden watched a full episode of Cops and was like, that shit is crazy. Yeah, and he's hiding a message in him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could have happened one time. One, there, there must have been one episode of Will and Grace where Osama was like, that, all right, that was pretty funny. I got to, listen, I got to admit, they're witty. They're witty. They're very witty. Wait, that was really good. He loves Becker. He's like, Becker is so good, man. Way better than Cheers. Way better than Cheers. People, that seems like a Ramsey Badawi stance. I Be- love Becker, dude. <laughs> Becker is better than Cheers. Becker is, uh, dude, whenever I get a chance to watch Becker, I, I, I'm in the blind friend at the at the restaurant. Becker yeah. is one of the best shows of the of the early, early aughts, late 90s. Yeah, that was when he let his hair go white. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was a big deal for Hollywood. Uh, what, Ted Danson. That's Ted Danson. Ted Danson. Great, great looking guy, man. I mean, really, kind of what I, he's sort of what I picture I look like. You know, when I tell people I do a podcast with you, and they go, "Wait, which? Who's Ramsey?" And I'm like, "You know, the Ted Danson looking comic." And yeah. Like, oh, he's so funny. Yeah, you know the comedian who, in his essence, reminds you of Ted Danson. Everything about him: ladies' man, charisma. You know, razor sharp wit. Razor sharp wit. Mm-hmm. Folks, before we go further into the show, it's a time I'm compelled to tell you about our Patreon. Um, $5 a month. Um, you get an extra episode every uh, every week. Free tickets to come see Brian and I perform when we come to your town. Monthly-ish packages. Monthly-ish. Yeah. Don't get all like you know demanding about it. We, th- I- we do it when we can. You know what I mean? Like We're on a, uh, a limited budget. And we're all in this together. We blow most of it. Every sing- we pay Spenny G... Listen, we're, we got air, a G. We, we got air conditioner bills. We pay Spenny G a G. I mean, it's it's so your it's, alimony, my child support. I mean, yeah, and of course, there's the there's the subway that I'm franchising. You're building a new subway. One of the cheapest. You know, it's the cheapest. Oh, the sandwich shop. Yeah, mm. you know, it's the cheapest. Uh, it's the cheapest fast food restaurant to franchise. It's like fifteen grand. We can all open up a subway. I'm serious. If we hit the right number on our Patreon, I'll open a subway. <laughs> <laughs> we should edit our tears tomorrow. I'm telling you, folks, if we can get the 15K, you can come to our town and get the worst ever worst hour of the week. <laughs> the worst hour of the week, Subway. Dude, it would be so good. Yeah, that's 100% going to – we're going to edit our Patreon tiers yeah. tomorrow. And we're going to have a $15,000 goal. So that we can open <laughs> the first ever worst hour Subway. You could look at that or we could close the first ever <laughs> worst hour Subway. That's fine. I got an unlimited names of LLCs <laughs> that we could form, buddy. They can't stop us. We'll continue oh, we to We got to get a subway. We have to get a franchise. That's we can a- hire Tyler. We can actually. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay a, I would pay slightly above minimum <laughs> wage to get Tyler as as the permanent manager of the Worst Hour Subway. <laughs> We're just us three are just eating a sandwich. (laughs) Tyler's frosting mayonnaise under my sandwich. Tyler's like, dude, I completely forgot all of the. (laughs) Tyler's like, I completely forgot all the ingredients you asked me to put in your sandwich. (laughs) So, so I just made you a burrito. (laughs) I was like, how? We don't even have the burrito ingredients. I figured it out. I got you bread, so (laughs) it's it's pretty good. So you'll you'll like it. Um, people like our monthly packages, man. People really uh, enjoy it. Did you see we got an, a response um, uh, from a Patreon who told us that actually the package made their year, and then they bleg- they begged and pleaded to not be <laughs> associated <laughs> to with not us be publicly. Named publicly. <laughs> they begged. They said, please, 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 whatever you do, don't mention that I listen to your show. That's the kind of people who listen to this program. People with... This is what I would like to urge everybody who's on the fence. Should I join the Patreon? I don't know. These are the kinds of people that are in our Patreon. People that, that know better. That they won't bother you. They won't bother you. They're movers and shakers. They got shit worth losing. They're like, whatever you do, don't say my name. Yeah, yeah. They're, they've never listened to us on anything other than headphones. I'd like to open up. They're our, in a car alone listening to us in headphones. Absolutely. They're in an office. They're buried up to their neck in paperwork that's unreal. I, you know what I want to do, and I'm I'm opening up our Patreon to this as well. I will pay if you're if you own a company and you want to join our Patreon, 
will not mention your company. Because to me, that's a valuable service in itself. Absolutely. We should have worst hour guarantee. We will not associate with you. We will never say. Some people might call that a threat because we will associate with you if you don't join. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to be, Brian and I are going to be like old mobsters walking into like Forever 21s. It'd be a shame if I associated (laughs) with you. (laughs) Boy, it would really be a shame to your company if I told everybody I got this shirt from here, wouldn't it? I got to say, we got a $25 level that could stop that from happening. I mean... (laughs) You know, I don't know if uh, you really want. We just we're doing an episode on Azerbaijan next week. Brian might say something. Yeah, could it could it be the gaps, yeah. Azerbaijan? I mean, it could be. Hey, you don't want Brian wearing his hat talking about his two for one bogo deal. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars. That's all you need. That's all you need, and we'll never mention you ever again. That's no, in fact the no, no, no. The corporations are at the twenty-five dollar level. But as an individual, individual, I'll I, never name you for five. <laughs> for five dollars, I will never name you on mic. You will never, ever, ever be discussed on this podcast, and that is a worst hour guarantee. Yeah. So I'm looking at you, coffee bean and tea leaf on sunset. Please enjoy uh, this one minute clip from our most recent episode of Patreon. You know what I think? I think Borat 2 is going to swing the election. Do you remember the movie Bruno, his character Bruno? Yeah, he, of course. He, do, you, do you realize that in his movie Bruno, he tried to fuck Ron Paul? Like he, he got Ron Paul uh, into a hotel room alone? The whole thing was like that he was going to try to make a celebrity sex tape. So he, so he tried to fuck Ron Paul. And Ron Paul on the way out goes, uh, he goes, that guy was queer as the dickens. <laughs> <laughs> what is he, Daniel Boone? You who know, says that? He seems like one of the guys who who doesn't has never interacted with a gay guy. Yeah, like he, he would never assume anybody's gay. He could you could like bring him into like a gay club. Yeah, and he yeah, wouldn't yeah. know people are gay. He think he'd be like these fellows are friendly. Yeah, he'd be one of those great guys. Time. Hey boys, and, yeah. and then he would see two guys kiss, and he'd be like, "Liberty, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Freedom to do all kinds of crazy yeah. shit. Let these two guys yeah, kiss. Yeah. That's the spirit, brother. There's no room for Uncle Sam in your relationship. <laughs> he's, he's loving it. He has no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, guys, queer than the blazes. He took his clothes off. Let's get going. He's queer as crazy. He put a hit on me and took his clothes off. For the second half of the show here, um, let's uh, talk about some of these, uh, you know, some of these breaking stories here. Donald Trump uh, actually being, uh, I believe, uh, what's the word where they let you go? Dismissed? Discharged. Discharged? Whoa, dude. Honorably. Honorably from the Walter Reed uh, Medical Facility. Uh, He, of course, as you're aware, had COVID-19, came down with it, um, came down with it along with, uh, let's see, like 20 people in his staff. I mean, it was a lot of fucking people, dude. That's because they have orgies. Yeah. I mean, here are all the people that came down with it. Robert O'Brien, who's Trump's uh, national security advisor. Kimberly Gulfoyle. Do you you know she is Trump's uh, son's girlfriend and she used to date Gavin Newsom? The range on this chick. Well, that's like uh, John Kerry's wife, Hines. Oh, the chick she, from- she was married to a prominent Republican and then went to John Kerry. Dude, this chick, I mean, this is, that's a super cool story. Teresa Hines? Yeah. Um, from, the, from the Hines Ketchup. Um, uh, For real. For, yeah. You know, Fortress or whatever they have. <laughs> uh, two Secret Service employees, an unidentified Marine, Katie Miller, who's Mike Pence's top aide, Kellyanne Conway, uh, North Carolina Senator Thomas Tills, a, a White House valet. <laughs> it just as a White House valet, a guy who's a personal valet to Trump. Uh, you know what's funny is not only does does he not tip probably, but also <laughs> he's got he's giving you COVID immediately. Are I you mean, allowed to have cash on you if you're president? I don't feel like it's I don't feel like it's legal. You don't have a wallet when you're president. It shouldn't be legal for the president to give you cash. Yeah, it's like wetsuit <laughs> rules. I would never. Could you imagine <laughs> taking money from the president? That That's would never. insane. No, no, it doesn't work that way. As an Arab, it makes no sense to me. I go, <laughs> well, surely if Trump, as an Arab, if Trump came to my donut shop, I would give him a donut, <laughs> then pay him. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what it, as as is custom where I'm from. And read that last name there. Chris Christie. Chris Christie, man. That was uh, a real tragic uh, turn. Was Chris Christie chilling with Trump? Here's what I learned. And here's the main here's the main takeaway from this story, folks. It's all. Did you see how all these people, Kellyanne Conway, also in the mix, bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. The 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 takeaway here was everybody had pictures with one another. Like it was like people with their arms around each other taking pictures. Mm-hmm. Like it was giving each other corona. You saw it all the way through. There is no 
if you're ever in a situation where somebody wants to put their arm around you and take a picture with you, you should just fucking not because there's no there's no way this turns out good. Well, you shouldn't shouldn't have been doing it before. Never. Anyway, there's no reason to be photographing yourself touching somebody else who's not your you know, domestic partner. If 2020 has taught me anything, it's you're either going to get a disease or maybe best case scenario, best case scenario. The guy who's got his arm around you is a sex criminal. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It seems to be what all, all the guys, Jeffrey Epstein, mm -hmm. uh, Epstein, it was like a trick. He would like run up to you. He would be like, you ready? He would yeah. have a photographer in a bush yeah. and he would see like Woody Allen walking down the street and he would sprint running man style yeah. right behind him. And they'd be like, ha yeah. get the picture. And then he's like, now if you open your mouth, I'll fucking put this big, out. Yeah, it's a I good mean, move. It's a move. Harvey Weinstein had like pictures with every single person on the planet. Like never take yeah, like a picture 19, with you. He had like Hillary Clinton on his shoulders in a pool. <laughs> if anybody ever asks you to take a picture with them, you should you should if you want to take the picture, here's how to do it. Fold your arms and no expressions from either of you at the camera. Both of you like this. Just completely straight faced. Yeah, that yeah. way, whenever like anybody, a '90s rom com, exactly back to back with your arms folded, kind of angry. Whenever people see the picture, they go, "We don't know what." These people think of one another. Our girl Melania was was infected. Melania, but, dude, she's so fucking hot. Dude. <laughs> she's the hottest first lady ever. Dude, I sometimes I get nervous when I watch <laughs> clips of her. I really do. She's so hot, dude. She starts stammering. She dresses cool too. That's she another problem. Super classy. She dresses like a fucking cool model. <laughs> she speaks a bunch of languages, dude. She is. She's. I mean, she's a you know a work of art. So she, she's the nation. female Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. He was a bodybuilder who went on to be a top-notch president, and she's a, a killer body who went, went on to be a top-notch to first top lady. Of, to be on top, <laughs> top of a top-notch president. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, come on. Do you think they fuck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think they fuck. Do you I, think they go doggy? I think they do whatever Trump's in the mood for. <laughs> That guy, he fucks, man. I'm sorry. People people want to be like, dude, she hates him. I'm like, there's no way. She actually loves him. That's actually unfortunate. Yeah, yeah She, she wishes looked. she hated him. How do you not love a president? It's hard. It's hard you not know? to. Like, if my wife, God forbid she even get a job, but if my wife. Uh, <laughs> became... <laughs> now, hey, that's a joke. <laughs> Write that down in your little sketch comedy booklet. See, nothing there. Yeah, um, uh, my wife gets a job. Write that down. <laughs> but if my wife was president, I wouldn't care what party she was a part of. I'd be like, I'm ten times more attracted to you because you're the fucking president. If she was elected, that's the, exactly. I'd be better if she took it. Though. If she took, it. <laughs> like, not elected at all, if like you know, wife, a coup. If your wife overthrew <laughs> a government, how hot is that? That would be so fucking hot. That would yeah, be dude. so tight. Yeah, <laughs> she could look like Mimi from Drew Carey. I would. Fucking, you wouldn't be able to keep me off her. Cause I, I personally feel that way. Is I don't want power. I just want to be in power's favor. That's sort of how I feel about it. So I go, I'm not interested in the presidency. Would love to be riding shotgun. Mm -hmm. You know, would love to come on the helicopter without doing the work. I don't want to be any, vice anything. No. What is the first the vice president's wife? Is is she the second lady? Uh, yeah, that's she's the second. She's uh, it's it goes first lady. Uh, it goes president, first lady, vice president. Some dumb bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the fourth one they just called their son. That guy, whatever that bitch I, is I was actually looking at Mike Pence's wife, and I felt bad for her because I was looking at the pictures of um, the uh, this uh, Mike uh, Steve Mnuchin, Mnuchin's wedding. Yeah. And Steve Mnuchin's like 59. He's marrying like a 30-year-old piece. Dude, and I was there. <laughs> Shit was fucking crazy. She's super hot. He's his third wife. He's a hedge fund investor. Yeah. And then to the left is Trump, you know, 74 with his naked model wife. Next, uh, who's Melania, who I have nothing but respect for. Yeah. But, but, and then you got Mike Pence and his super religious Midwestern wife. What do they talk about yeah. when they're at the table? You know what I mean? There's no way they've <laughs> ever talked to each other. There's no way they've what ever had a conversation. What could they say? There's nothing that Mike Pence could ever hear from them that would be acceptable. There's nothing he could say to relate with them. I know. So what do y'all think about the afterlife? Like, yeah, what, yeah. They're gonna be like, what are you talking about? He's just been thrown into this Manhattan hedge fund cocaine orgy <laughs> fake tit yeah. world. And he's like Mr. Corn Christian. He's literally reading the Bible while they talk. <laughs> His wife has that Midwestern helmet hair. On weekends, he goes, I guess I can try some of that seltzer water. Only for the only for the weekend. <laughs> and then we're... <laughs> None of the flavored ones, though. Give me like a good, solid, no flavored seltzer <laughs> water, and then we'll see. That's when he's letting it loose. That's when he rolls his sleeves up. Goes, Dude, That's Camp David Pence. Such a hangover right now. I had a payday bar earlier. He's like, <laughs> man, I, I got to tell you. 
I have a weakness for them. I love peanuts. It's an efficient way to get them. Yeah, hundred so. <laughs> percent. I hate the chocolate. He could be. A, <laughs> I love the peanuts. He was very close. Do you think he was watching on the sideline during this COVID scare, being like, "Oh, dude, this is like you know." You're the last thing he must want after three years of seeing what it's like. There's no way he he he. There's no way he wants to be president. Yeah. Do people do people just want to? You just want to have a Fox show. Right. That's yes. the pathway. You go, I don't need to be president. Just give me a show on Fox. Yeah. Or, or like if the Democrat version is you get an Oscar, you get an Oscar, you know, like Al Gore. Yeah. Got an Oscar. You, or you, you know, you. Uh, yeah. You get an Oscar. I guess you're right about that. You could transition into show. I think Obama probably has an Oscar, too. Yeah. Kobe, I, Kobe Bryant does. You know, but I'd rather get Fox News famous because because uh, these people who do like Oscars, it's like, wow, man, three. Uh, 350,000 people watched the Oscars last year. And like C- Tucker Carlson gets like 25 million people <laughs> every know. second watching him. I know. 25 million new people. It's insane. <laughs> I know. Tucker Carlson is the king of all media. Take yeah. that, Howard Stern. <laughs> Melania was infected, of course. She's currently quarantining in the White House. Um, she's got to stay there for 14 days. Can't leave. Isn't it? This is a, an interesting sign of how much better their lives are than ours. She's got to stay in the White House. Yeah, like, she's been staying in New York the whole time. Could you? And that's like a bummer to her. She's like, I have to. Could you imagine if you and I got to stay <laughs> at the White House for 14 days? Do you know what happened? I either have cancer or we won a crazy radio show contest where it's like, we get to stay there for two yeah. weeks. Or there was like a <gasps> terrorist invasion while we were getting a tour. Yeah, there's no way. You know, that's like a Seth Rogen movie or something. If I got to stay in the White House, I'd be trying to overstay my welcome. If I, I'd be like, oh, yeah. Are you sure you guys I would try to stay between administrations. Oh, totally. I would be like, if I got to go on a tour today at the White House, when on the way out, I'd be like, do you guys want me to stick around and help? I'm cool. I'll do you think you could hide in the bathroom like in an Amtrak? Yeah, maybe. And then the tour's over, and then in the middle of the night, you come out. Would be a great gig for me if I was a bathroom attendant at the White House. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Whenever anybody came in to take a piss at the president's place, I'd give them a mint. <laughs> The, all the senators you'd hear them fucking in the stalls yeah <laughs> i'd be the nice palestinian boy over there yeah they're like well, yeah we're nice to them we love that we're that guy i mean we fund the shit out of israel but we love your people yeah i mean we love him we love that guy <laughs> other than him i don't know if we can that poor anything. valet poor where's valet. he driving trump he, he, Doesn't Trump fly everywhere? I, like right from the lawn? I guess he's kind of more of a personal assi- assistant. Where does he go? <laughs> like in a car? I guess when he comes around, like, you know, like, you know, I, I I don't really understand how busy Trump is. I imagine he's incredibly busy. So I feel like he's got like different personal assistants for different regions of the house. Right. You and think so, he's busy? I mean, look, I think he is busy. <laughs> I don't know if he's doing anything productive. <laughs> That's my life. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I'm certain based on the, his tweeting patterns and the way he writes and the way he thinks. And I mean, for crying out loud, the guy, the guy had like a full on photo shoot this weekend. I mean, he really got pictures taken. This guy was, by the way, refused to be seen. Him sick was him without a tie. Remember, every picture that he, yep. of Trump this yep. weekend was him without a tie. That was him cutting loose. Yeah, that was yeah letting the tie down. That's wild. You don't see him dressed like that. He's signing papers. He's just writing his name on papers. Yep. I, yeah, I imagine he's doing Sudoku. Whatever he's doing, he thinks he's busy. At least he has a blazer on, no matter what his fever is. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that, no man. I kind of like people were people were saying that like uh, that everybody was lying about how speedy his recovery was going to be. Mm-hmm. I, I like. I like when they lie. Like, I don't know why people get mad about that. I'm like, I love it. When they told me Corona was going to be over in like two weeks, I love that. Yeah. Well, you, you, you have that mentality of like, you know, you, a lot of your leaders kind of Lukashenko y. Yeah. You could tell me anytime. Yeah. The dictator's like, listen, potato and work cures Corona. I will never get it. I'm invincible. I like Kim Jong un. We don't know. He might be dead. If it's not true, I love it. If you're going to tell me something not true, I totally don't mind. I'm like, that's fine. But that's leadership. That's leadership, man. I don't, I've never been led by somebody telling me the truth. Like, you lie to me. Tell me tell me you're going to be fine. You're invincible. I want my leaders to be Superman. And I thoroughly think Donald Trump is a Superman. He's on. In, he's <laughs> apparently on. Uh, he, w- he had a very scary go at it, as everybody is aware. I guess he, like, you know, needed to be. Uh, he had an oxygen supply. I don't think a, he was intubated, though. Yeah, he was not intubated or anything, to my understanding, either. Second, uh, he's got two experimental drugs that he's, that he's taken. He's on roids. He's on steroids. Dude, he's going to come out so buff. I don't know. I noticed when he was talking, he seemed kind of hard. He seemed like he was, yeah, 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 yeah. He was chubbed up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he always fluffs before a public appearance. Dude, if he got... That's what that valet was doing. I'm going to tell you right <laughs> now. If Trump got 
some fucking like imagine if he had like the rocks arms right <laughs> he would shatter this election into new i'm so thankful i mean we should really if you guys want to talk about a potential october surprise yeah we should be really watching to make sure he's not doing push-ups or anything anything like that did you dude. see the rock and his video endorsing biden yeah i did see that he looked like a, somebody put a sh- shirt over a ninja turtle yeah. like his muscles are confusing yeah. like they're not he looks like an advancement in the species. Yeah, he's. Uh, he's it's, I don't even know how you walk around. I feel like I could beat his ass because he's so big that I don't even think he could throw a punch. Dude, he he Just, he fucking rules, dude. In terms of what our but the what we think the pers- the perfect body on a male is, you and me. It looks like body dysmorphia. Uh, to me, from a from a FM broadcaster's point of view. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is what a man looks like. I, you heard it here though. I do think I could whoop his ass. Yeah, and that's a fucking. Now that's a cool point of view. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking point of view I can live with, dude. Trump got out of the he got out of the hospital today. Of course, we were talking about it earlier. He was he got in trouble because he was circling the parking the parking lot. <laughs> he just decided he he's such a nut job. He decided his people were out there. He wanted to go say hello to them, which was fucking. It's so funny to have a whimsical president. He understands people <laughs> in a way that, unfortunately, uh, his opponent does not understand people. He's like, dude, these people are out here to see me. I gotta show them. I gotta, I gotta go connect with them, man. I wanna, I wanna show these people my. Face. So they were just chilling outside Walter Reed. Just chilling, supporting and so him. He, and he was like, "Let's circle pit around." He's like, "My valet's already got Corona, yeah. so that's safe." We printed. I printed T-shirts. I was standing out front. I was said, "Pray for Trump." Yeah. Um, and <laughs> pray for Trump. Uh, pray for Trump. Um, and then I, uh, you know. Uh, would do like a like a sarcastic shirt maybe for people who didn't like him like pray for Trump like quotation marks Trump oh or something. got him yeah because you want to play both markets so you want to play both markets so as people come in you want to be able to provide them with a t shirt for either side of their opinion so that's sort of the worst hour of the week that must be a hot seller the ironic pray for Trump shirt yeah I <laughs> I have this t shirt that I'll throw up uh, you know what I can't even it's there's no way to put it up online I'll put it up on on our Twitter you can follow us worst hour of the week worst hour pod. Um, it's a t-shirt, uh, that I saw a Mexican lady selling on the side of the road for $2 and it said, uh, uh, Democrats and it had like a, like an upside down cross and it said death, destruction, other things, <laughs> other things. It was definitely a shirt that I'm like, there's no way th- this was written by Chinese artificial intelligence, <laughs> right? But still following the rule of thirds <laughs> Yeah. without a lack of, yeah, there's no way they know exactly what was being said. Dems, death, destruction, other things. He left. Trump leaves the hospital today. Uh, he says Corona is nothing to be afraid of, which is. Uh, That's a nice message to send to, you know. I guess they 210,000 people died. They hit that mark right when he said that. And when he when he got to the White House, apparently. <laughs> the first thing he did was uh, he took off his mask. <laughs> <laughs> He treated it like it was like uh like he was a like he was a chick with big boobs who could finally take her bra off. Like he was like <laughs> There's like there's footage of him like walking into like can you pull up some of these pictures of him Spencer when he when he gets right when he gets to the White House he takes off his mask and literally like he's still positive with it with it. he didn't be, <laughs> he's not out of his system. He thinks he beat it, which is what, what I don't think people understand. I think it's. I think you just go Trump back at the White House. There's some pictures of him. What people people are like yelling at him. People are like, "This guy's doing evil." Like they don't get it. He's he look. He came back. He took off his mask. He thumbed up everybody. <laughs> There's literally a photo of him so removing like, the, mask. the mask. He thinks he beat it. I I really think he doesn't believe that he has it still. So you know what do you what do you expect out of this? According to Trump, he is going to be ready to debate on October (laughs) fifteenth. He said that, dude. He literally (laughs) this motherfucker straight up says, (laughs) "I'm ready to debate on on October fifteenth." There is no way. I think he's going to do it. I think he'll. I I think he's going to debate. I think he's gonna show up in a like a Pope mobile. I think I think it's gonna be canceled, but he's gonna show up and he's gonna live tweet from being there. Like, yo, I'm here. Where's your boy Joe from, at? From a dark stage. Where's Joe? Oh, is Joe scared? He'll be saying he'll be saying shit like that, and unfortunately, that or, works. Or Joe will show up and he'll just start blowing on him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. 
<laughs> so it's a it's it's a a clusterfuck uh, apparently. Over they should there, get though. those grocery store plexiglass. In the yeah, like a penalty box, like a hockey player for for for, Trump, for the debates. They should they should debate through like penalty boxes, and they can maybe move. Maybe they could. <laughs> I like a debate where they could walk to the center of the stage. I, I want to see those debates. The town dude. hall. Those are the town hall debates. The town hall debates. I yeah. love when they come out to the center of the stage. Oh, the Hillary Trump town hall debate is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. There's no reason. There's there's no way they're gonna want him to do a town hall style debate. I mean, Biden's campaign is fucking thrilled because. I mean, when you get that, when you get no podium in front of Trump and you get him in the center center of the round. Uh, yeah. Oh, dude. And he's doing like this shit while he's talking. <laughs> he's literally lighting. Yeah. He's lighting. Uh, Brian did the worm with his arms, people. Yeah. <laughs> Just for the audio listener there. <laughs> uh, he's He lights people up, dude. He's got that back in black fucking energy, man. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. How's it going, Dun -dun. folks? He's pointing at people. He's Dun -dun. high -fiving Dun -dun. people. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. It's, it's insane. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. <laughs> he's, he's signing a chick's tits. <laughs> he's the first president to have pyrotechnics <laughs> at the debate. <laughs> he's smoking a cigar. He, he puts it out. He literally looks like <laughs> he looks like Ron White in the beginning of a comedy special. Yeah, yeah. He's got a glass of scotch. <laughs> puts it down. Loosens his tie a little bit. He he he, he makes Melania hold it. Oh my god. Biden's just doing dips on his chair, waiting for him to come out. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting story. Red Bull Air wanted for hit and run. This is so. Um, the do you guys know that the air? Did you guys know Red Bull was? Uh, and I, I sort of should have known Red Bull was. It's a, European, right? It's actually Thai, I, which is <laughs> a complete surprise to me. This is a what's going on right now is international police are are on the lookout for uh for the era of Red Bull. Uh, he apparently killed a, a motorcycle cop in Thailand <laughs> in 2012. He hit and run this dude, right? And he in 2012? In 2012. And he's been on the lam ever since? Well, he, they, they couldn't quite nail him on any charges before. Yeah. Because whatever you think about our criminal justice system, <laughs> just understand. Well, we don't have a king. Start there. We could start there. It gets a lot worse in other places for sure. And this guy, he hits his motorcycle cop, he kills him or whatever, and he kind of—they can't really get him on anything. But a, as of as of most recently, they have reopened the case, and they'd like to—they'd like to charge him. So international police, which we believe, we don't. Where are they stationed? Do we know? No, probably like like where Pirate Bay was. Where it, you yeah. know, like what? in the middle of international waters. Space station would be good. A pirate ship. Pirate ship would be good. Igloo would be sick. Yeah, igloo would be, igloo would be dope. It would be really cool. Or like maybe Arctic Circle somewhere unorganized. Or whatever. International police maybe had a had an underground thing in Mariana's Trench. Like you had to get into a subway. Of solitude. Or subway. <laughs> I mean, a, a, a submarine. There's probably a subway at the bottom of Mariana's Trench. I, you know, yeah, there probably is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I've never seen you drink a Red Bull. I actually like Red Bull. It's a little too artistic. Why does an energy drink need to be so artistic? Is, is how I feel <laughs> I mean, about it. Yeah, you do drink shit that has like mud tire tracks on it. It's shit. really interesting because like, I, I really, I never realized it before, but the Red Bull, of course, came from an Asian culture. It's such a delicate, kind of beautiful, simple product. Everything that Americans did with energy drinks was what was the like. It's it's now this big, and now it's got a four hundred <laughs> yeah. milligrams of caffeine. Uh, four hundred yeah, yeah. milligrams of caffeine? Like, what do you care? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't dye your piss. Yeah. Red, Red Bull, your piss is the same color. It doesn't come out neon. You ever realize that they tell you something is, has a thousand milligrams in it, so you think it has a lot more of something in it? Yeah. They could just tell you it has one gram of it. It's the same fucking. Yeah. What sounds like more, one gram of caffeine or one thousand milligrams of caffeine? Yeah, but once you start getting into grams, it feels like you're doing straight up drugs. Fair point. A thousand milligrams sounds medicinal. Yeah. A gram sounds recreational. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a psychological thing. All right, we've probably done enough show for tonight. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. It's getting hot in here, and I do not want to take off all my clothes. <laughs> no, I, I don't think there's a situation where you do want to take off all your clothes. Do you fuck through a zipper? I I have. <laughs> my girlfriend doesn't let me anymore. <laughs> I'm like, come on. You know it's my fantasy. <laughs> me fully clothed, you <laughs> fully clothed. <laughs> None of us having to look at any part that we're not comfortable with sharing to the other one. 
I mean, oh, it's so hot. It's so hot through a zipper. Through a zipper missionary? Yeah. Dude, God, God I, that's that's honestly sex that God himself would approve of. He'd be like, that's, to- that's totally fine. Uh, yeah, he's like, I don't see anything filthy. If you want to do that before marriage, go for it. <laughs> but make sure it's in her ass. Make sure it's in her butt. <laughs> That's right. what that's God's words, not ours. Not ours. So don't you know? Don't get weird. Be sure to follow the show across all social media platforms at Worst Hour Pod. You can follow Brian um, at Twitter at Brian J Voki. Actually, it's been deactivated lately, but he'll be back. Once Trump got Corona, I got off. Fair enough. <laughs> follow him on Instagram <laughs> at Mr. Brian Voki. Uh, you can follow our our producer Spenny G at Spenny G on Instagram and uh, tw- what's your Twitter again, Spenny? Just Spencer Gaspar. Spencer Gaspar. G A S P A R. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Ramsbad. Um, you can email the show uh, worst hour of the week at gmail.com. Send us stories, pictures of your tits, whatever you want to send yeah, us. Yeah, or your dongs, but send them to Spencer. We had somebody, and we'll we'll address it on the next episode. We had somebody send us like financial scams. I mean, people people are really are starting to get creative in there, and we definitely we welcome it. Right. Also, the Herbert Hoover rundown, of the biography of Herbert Hoover. Yeah, we should probably. That was yeah. awesome. The biography of Her- Herbert Hoover was great. We should start putting a signature at the bottom of our emails that tells people that we are legally <laughs> required to report child abuse <laughs> <laughs> and all the other shit that your therapist has yeah, to say. It's called mandated reporting. Yeah, we have we have to let you guys know that, unfortunately, due to some legal restrictions, we do have to report some of those emails. I mean, so. I was a preschool teacher for six years, so I am I was a mandated reporter at certain points, so, so I may yeah. have to call CPS on some of our listeners. I, I Listen, as, a, as an industry... You gotta self-regulate before fucking the government gets involved. In oh, it. I was and hoping that would rhyme. When podcast, yeah, I know it's. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Spenny will write something and then we'll we'll get it to rhyme. I'd like <laughs> to get ahead of regulation in podcasting, so we're mandated reporting. We're self-regulating that way. When we get called up on Congress, we get to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We self-regulated. We, we're a deregulation podcast. That's our number one platform. Join our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash/whotw, guys. Uh, by joining the Patreon, you can actually get us one step closer to our dream, which is to eventually testify in front of Congress on something. Mm-hmm. Just drink some warm water, talk into a skinny microphone. And of course, uh, we are uh, closer to our goal, opening, <laughs> opening up a subway. That's 100% <laughs> our goal. We're going to do that. The worst hour of the week subway, dude. It was so fucking we good. We just play our podcast in there. Play our podcast. Well, well, they- <laughs> we'll do spins on the we'll do spins on the on the food, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it'll yeah. be like the the coof de meatball sub, like we'll oh, do middle we'll Mediterranean twists on it. A little shawarma. A little shawarma sub. Not bad. A shawarma pizza. Yeah. A flatbread shawarma pizza. Yeah, pizza. <laughs> yeah, we're on to it. We'll figure it. We'll, we'll hammer out the details later. Oh, man. Do you know how I told you I wanted to open up my own falafel? Um, uh-huh. open, and I, we will close out the show after this. Um, I thought of a jingle. You know, I was going to do my oh, own falafel company. Let's hear it. Um, Spen- Spenny G, I'm going to be creating my own falafel mix. So um, this is going to be the, the jingle. Tell me if you guys think it'll catch on. <clears throat> Are you ready for falafel? Like, are you ready for football, yeah. but falafel? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready for falafel? All my hungry friends are here seven days a week. Okay. We can we can absolutely cut that out. But that, <laughs> um, I've got nothing else to say here, Brian. You've got nothing else to say here. Um, on behalf of everybody here at the Worst Hour Nation, me, Spenny, Brian, uh, peace be on to the prophet. And remember, we're all in this together. Coming in hard with the depravity you see. This is the worst hour of the week. Reaching new lows with Brian and Ramsey. This is the worst hour of the week. The worst hour of the week. Thank you for listening to the worst hour of the week with Brian Vokey and Ramsey Badawi. Peace be on to the prophet. Okay.